Hi, this is Rick Harsh, and this is my master class in fiction. Pardon the shaky hands. Um, I'm just excited uh, because I haven't done one of these for three, four days. Um, you can skip this ad in three days. Today's subject is how to review a fellow author's book. Um, if you're like most people, it seems, or lots of people, you uh, review books on Goodreads, or, or at least you spend time on Goodreads, and they have a star system. The best is five, the worst is one. Um, I want to ask you how anybody can write a one-star book. Well, first off, they can write a really bad book. But if a person finishes a novel, and if you're in my master class and you finish a novel, you've got two already and and probably you're going to get three you know because uh, why why err on the side of meanness so uh one of my books uh is um being uh sold all over the world uh, because the the man jeff bercy who wrote unidentified man at left of photo is known throughout the world for a couple of terrific books He's also known for being a, um, uh, I don't know, something like a postmodernist. Um, and uh, so this latest book, which I, I think, I think uh, you know, if you have no experience uh, reading anything uh, outside of the mainstream in literature, <clears throat> if you read this book, which is very, very readable, very easy to read, um, you can uh, uh, take the meaning and, you know, if you, if the, the more you put into it, the more you'll get out of it. But you can also just have fun and read it quick. And then it would be, he would strike you the way Kurt Vonnegut struck me, particularly in Breakfast of Champions. It's a liberating book. It shows you that you can do anything you want in a novel. And that that alone um, gives it a five to me, but the very fact that it was brilliantly done, um, and is funny gives it fives, 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 fives. And everybody, um, on the Goodreads page gave it a five, except for one person who gave it a one. <laughs> a one. This guy has written his third book. Both, uh, the first two were very well reviewed. He's also a critic and a highly regarded critic. And um, so I, I, I saw this one, and uh, I, I, I replied, I said, no explanation, a review not described. Uh, you know, there wasn't really a review, it was just an attack. And I wrote, is this personal? And then I wrote, readers trust such notable critics as Stephen Moore and Chris Villa. The um, reviewer, by the way, his name is uh, Ian Marvin, in quotes, Gray. Uh, so Ian Marvin Gray wrote the review, and so that's what I wrote. And um, he wrote, he responded to me with, same publisher, I see, and uh, made a comment about Stephen Moore, uh, apparently negative. And so then I responded, I should have realized that you're also a co-owner of this press, so you're reviewing five starring your own publications without any disclosure and promoting so-called critics who've hyper blurbulated your novels, in quotes, and publications. I'd call it an orgy of reciprocal promotion. Didn't Bercy recently elevate the short lived verb oh i said something about the oh i said i i'm proud of it and grateful to mr bercy for elevating our press and that that's when he wrote what i just read he said i'd call it an orgy of reciprocal promotion didn't bercy recently elevate the short-lived verb of voracious press and somebody um took his side and there's some other stuff written and so i, I wrote dear ian just as a friendly warning, such uh, sacrilegious use of the noble word orgy tends to take one to bad places and puts one at risk of coming to a bad end in a sterile landscape. Take care, Rick. And that's true. I mean, um, orgies are great. 
they're, they're, uh, orgies are, it's a wonderful word. And what it describes is, is um, properly used, is something beautiful that happens in nature. So please, you know, if you're going to be attacking someone, don't call it an orgy, you know, his orgies are good. You know, in fact, what he wrote was um, an orgy of reciprocal promotion. Well, reciprocal promotion is um, used at, the, at every level of literature, but when you're down at our level, you know, a low, low budget level, um, writing books that uh, a few people recognize as great, and, uh, but most people don't even hear of, um, what it is is uh, um, a collection of people who come together and try to help each other and are very generous in trying to get each other published and so on. And as you know, that's how um, my press started, was um, I, ha I had to rescue a couple of my books, and then um, I, I came into a little bit of money, but it was enough to publish David Vardaman, a very worthy writer, a little older than me. And, um, and now people are finally reading David Vardaman, and they're, they're, they're finding him wonderful. So, uh, Ian... Um, you know, uh, I find out now that you're, you've had a long running feud with, uh, let's just say the, uh, Stephen Moore school of, uh, writers, which for those of you who don't know, uh, Moore wrote an alternative history of the novel and, um, and he tends to promote, um, more exploratory works, experimental works, metafictional works and so on. But not only that, I've, I've read a, a number of his reviews, and I think he on, I've only read one bad review. He, he doesn't want to destroy writers, um, and I think he probably has turned down a bunch of books. But, you know, because of Stephen Moore, I've learned about um, Chandler Brossard, who's probably the uh, most exciting um, discovery of mine in, in, in decades. And we're soon going to bring him out. And, you know, Chandler Broussard's the kind of guy who I would sit down and talk with and we would um, s promote each other. And, uh, you know, and that's what I'm trying to do here even. I want to promote the writer who thinks freely. And that doesn't mean that you're limited to uh, the metafictional. Um, our fattest single novel is Cynicism Management by Bori Proper, which is, um, I would call it a, a rather um, straightforward satire. So it's as straightforward as a satire could be. Um, I don't know anymore, I don't recall metafictional hijinks or anything like that. It's just a good old-fashioned fun satire of modernity. And, um, and it's a blast. Uh, so, so there's no, the, the, the mistake here, Ian, is thinking that there's one school or another. Um, I don't ever read um, the best of the, the reviewers like Stephen Moore, Chris Villa. Um, I don't know about Jeff Bursay. I haven't read uh, any of his, or much of his. I, I, read, I read him on uh, Blaise Sandra. And, um, and it was wonderful, but, um, I don't know where Sandra would fit. Um, so a lot of, a lot of what is called metafictional and so on, and a lot of what is championed by people like Stephen Moore, Chris Villa, Jeff Percy, and myself, uh, are books that don't quite fit anywhere. And I'll give you one example. One is, uh, it just came up yesterday. There was a guy named Vincent Carter, who was the only black man in Bern, Switzerland, I think the early 60s, maybe, and he wrote the Burn book, and it was spectacular. It, it's nothing, um, it's nothing uh, that, that you can categorize except as maybe uh, something like a travel book with a certain, <laughs> a certain theme that naturally runs through it, but it was spectacular. And uh, I was in Bern, and I, I talked to his widow, and, and she was wonderful. And we found out that Vincent Carter had other books that just went unpublished. And um, 
this was back in the 90s, and um, I helped to get it published. I get, it, one of his... Uh, um, is it here somewhere? Um, let me look. Just to, uh, It's in the second row. Um, uh, so I, I don't remember the name of it, but look up uh, Vincent Carter, Steerforth Press. Um, and if it's more than 500 pages, that's the one. Um, he's from Kansas City. So anyway, Ian, it's good to meet you. And uh, I hope we can continue to share our, our thoughts in a pleasant way in the future. Take care. And you uh, uh, students of mine, don't ever give a one. No, no book is worthy of a one. You know, in, in, in Bercy's case, if you don't like what he's doing, read his prose and decide, is this guy a competent writer? More than competent. Top of the line. So that should get him a three or four at the very least. If you don't like what he's up to, well, you know, like I, I, I could read, um, I mean, I, I couldn't give Saul, Bell, Saul Bellow fives. Um, but I, I probably, if I read them again right now, I'd have to give them fours. Uh, and maybe even five, just because, you know, I, I just uh, didn't like the, the subjects of his literature, Updike too. Um, but, uh, you know, if I looked at their sentences, I'd probably have to say, yeah, okay, five. Yeah, so, all right. Take care, and uh, Ian, let's uh, let's get something going here. Bye bye.